Hello, everybody. So today I want to talk about a possible future of decentralized computing, decentralized AI compute for the vehicle fleet of Teslas. And let's let's start with the beginning. So most Teslas currently ship with hardware 3.0, which is great hardware. It's been praised by multiple analysts and it is it, it, it is hardware that is designed by Tesla and you can actually see uh, the Tesla chip right here and it was specifically designed for them to run FSD software. Every Tesla gets, gets shipped with the hardware whether they buy FSD or not by the way. And the Cybertrucks and the future Teslas will actually have hardware 4.0 um, which, which is um, the equivalent of 50 trillion operation per second. So it, it's tough to find which metric you want to use in order to compare the power of these compute systems, of these chips. It's really not that easy, in my view, because I'm not in the field. So I'm using the the thing that speaks the most to me, which is trillion operations per second. So you can see hardware free, most Teslas right now can do up to 36 trillion operation per seconds. Hardware four, the cyber trucks that are getting shipped, uh, that's going to be 50 trillion operation per second. And of course, for full cell driving, that helps the car have, in this case, five megapixel cameras as opposed to 1.2 megapixel cameras and other things like that. To give you an idea of uh, what you would need to pay to get 50 trillion operation per seconds uh, through, a, through a graphics uh, unit, for a GPU unit, Today, so as of December of 2023, um, this is the closest one I could find online that has just about 50 trillion operation per seconds max. And as you can see, the cost is uh, $1,400. It costs $1,400. This is the GeForce RTX 4080. Um, yeah, that's 1400 bucks, and you would get about 50 trillion operation uh, per second max. And, you know, people on the internet who analyze this, they, they go and they try to say, oh, a Tesla onboard computer is more powerful than that. Um, there's many examples, you know, I, I, one showed that it was something like 270,000 times uh, more than Apollo 11. Um, not too surprising, but um, it's actually more powerful than the AI chips on a F-35 fighter jet, which is interesting to, to me that, that your random Tesla can have more power than uh, one of the most advanced pieces of military technology. But it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. So 50 trillion operations per second. That's that's a lot. That's That's really a lot. Now, it costs this much money, 1400 bucks, to buy this GPU. Now, I bet you most people will not buy a $1,400 GPU. They, they can't justify that. Most people are not gamers, right? I mean, as you, as you grow older, typically you game less. Most people are not gamers, and if they are... They buy, you know, they, they buy a $200 GPU or they buy a gaming console on your TV, which doesn't get anywhere near that, right? The RTX 30, uh, for, uh, 4080 is the top of the line of NVIDIA, right? Uh, so, so that's the problem. But uh, there's, a, there's another problem is the Tesla hardware 4, so if you own a Tesla... Right, you're also not going to be driving in most of the time, right? You're only going to drive it to work or you know here and there, but you're not going to be driving it every day. Which means that that hardware, that hardware four, which would cost fourteen hundred bucks, is just going to be sitting idle most of the time, doing nothing. And and, and the question is, what is Tesla working on right now? And, and we know from Elon Musk from a, uh, you know a month and a half ago talked about how their vehicle AI computer is able to run models, right? R run the models such as Grok, for example, Grok AI. Uh, and because of that, if you were to have some sort of a decentralized system where you could access the compute on these cars, you would have the most amount of true usable inference compute on Earth if you were to actually use the idle power in those cars, the idle GPUs in those cars. So, and even if some of these cars were robot taxis, you could st still only assume that quite a bit would not be used and you would you would be able to use it, to use it for decentralized compute, decentralized computing, uh, distributed inference, and the most famous example outside of a Bitcoin field of a uh, organization that does that is SETI, where you can install a software and donate computing power uh, to search for extraterrestrials. Anyway, kind of a funny project, but it is what it is. So so what if, 
with a software update. Teslas could simply do distributed compute when not in use. All it would take is a software update and then Tesla can access the onboard computer and you can sell your extra compute from when your car is parked on the driveway and not, not being used. You can just sell it to uh, third parties, Teslas, if they need it, or a client of Tesla that may need to have access to the computing power. And this solves so many issues, for example, related to having to you to, to power the, these machines. You know, data centers typically the one of one of the greatest greatest component of a data factor, one of the greatest factors is will will, it, will you have access to the power to power a data center? Well you don't have to worry about that if it's just distributed computing and the power can be found anywhere, right? Any home can can use a little bit of power to power their onboard computer on the Tesla and resell that power. So let me ask this question otherwise. Could Tesla become a decentralized Amazon Web Services of sort, where compute tasks are distributed to idle Teslas, and Tesla simply acts as an intermediary between buyers of compute and owners of idle Tesla cars, i.e. idle compute power, right? Tesla could, could skim something off the top, like a 15, 20% cut, on whatever compute task and then could distribute these compute tasks um, a la AWS, except instead of owning all of your servers and controlling everything, you, will, you would just use your customer's car and, 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 and use it as a platform. So creating a, a platform for people to sell their excess compute from the Tesla cars, which already have these inference computers. They already have these GPU competitive computers because GPUs is how you do generative AI. And of course, Tesla is one of the leaders in generative AI. They have the biggest baby AGI project out there, which is self-driving. It's the biggest project of the sort, biggest usable project of the sort out there. And this concept, by the way, is very similar to Bitcoin mining, right? How does Bitcoin mining work? You plug in your miner at home, join a mining pool, get a tiny piece of Bitcoin every 10 minutes. And if you, today, Bitcoin miner has become so competitive, it's very tough to, to make money, but you can still install a Bitcoin miner on any laptop and run it when you don't use the laptop. Now you'll make pennies and it will make way less than the power it uses, but you can still do it. You can still mine Bitcoin on your laptop. This is this is no different, but you're using your car this time. And this is similar to SETI as well. So thinking big, having having more of a more more, more of a more, more of a bigger frame of thought on this is are Teslas, the Teslas that we see everywhere, are they really cars? Are they cars? And I think that's one of the big questions because, you know, if you claim that Tesla is highly overvalued, you, you, you deem it to be a car company. Let's see, they have transportation. So yeah, that's a car, transportation is a car. But of course, one of, one of, the, one of the longer run projects, you know, seven, 10 years from now, maybe less is, are you gonna be able to rent these cars as robo taxis? You know, and, and, and to a lesser extent, you could argue if, if you rent any car on Churro, for example, the car rental app, all of a sudden, it's not just a transportation device, it's also a, a, a money-making uh, tool for you. So, but that's true for every car, like renting it on Turo is true for every car. Renting it as robo-taxis, you, you're getting into RFID air. Fewer cars can do that. Now, batteries for range, batteries for range, that's great, and batteries, um, that, that, that's only true, of course, for electric cars, right? Gas cars don't have batteries, but they have just, just an em empty tank uh, when you're out of gas, right? But having a battery is much better than having an empty tank, because when you have a battery, you can use that battery for other uses than powering the car. And so if you look at the Cybertruck, the Cybertruck, depending on the version that you get, it's between 11 and 15, 11 and 15 power walls, right? And power walls are like, you know, 8,000 bucks, you have 11 and 15 of them in the car when the truck is at home and it's plugged into your house through bi-directional charging. And then your house itself is plugged into the network, right, to the, to the grid, plugged into the grid. All of a sudden, you have sort of an energy bank and you can, you can manage trading of energy, right? You, you, can, you can create and store your own energy you know, from your roof when the sun is out and resell it when the grid needs a lot of power, or you can 
arbitrage electric rates, right? If you if you, if you if your grid sells you power for very cheap at night, you can just get the power for cheap at night, store it into your vehicles, and resell it whenever you have a high price for 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 buying the power from the grid, right? And that happens oftentimes in September. So. All of a sudden, your car is not just for transportation anymore. All of a sudden, it is also for storing energy and, and you're buying an energy bank in addition to buying a, a transportation device that you can also rent. Now, FSD capability is the same thinking, right? So FSD, it's great. The car drives itself, but you're not driving all the time. Um, so that's fine, right? It could sit idle or you could resell that extra compute. You could resell that extra compute power. And in that case, if you're reselling the extra compute power when the, when the car is idle, the value of EVs really go, goes beyond just transportation, beyond just batteries. You've added a third value to EVs, which is the ability to resell compute. And this is where it gets the most interesting for me, starting to think of Teslas as compute. Remember right now, the Teslas that are shipped out have about $1,400 worth of compute chip in it 1400 bucks right an expense that you made for the car you didn't make that expense for the compute the compute comes free uh, if you've earmarked that expense only for the car that makes some sense so the largest computer in the world right now there's there's you know rankings as they are the largest computer in the world is a frontier computer oak ridge national laboratory laboratory united states that's the largest computer in the world uh, and, and and it's got um uh, 1194 teraflops tera uh, ter ter um, um, that's, a, that's a petaflop actually so that's that would be one 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 point one nine four million teraflop it what is what it does one i translate to teraflops for for e easy uh easy comparison so 1.194 million trillion operations per second million trillion think about that or another way to say it it's it's one trillion trillion operation per seconds okay each hardware uh four for tesla is 50 trillion operation per second each hardware three is 36 trillion operation per second and you know where i'm going with this this is my back of the napkin math let's do it so the world's largest computer is 1 million 194,000 trillion operation per second. That's, as of June 2023, the largest um, supercomputer in the world. Well, how many how many Teslas is that? How many Teslas is that? Well, it turns out, when you take that number of teraflops and, and divide it by 50 teraflops per Cybertruck, that's only 23,880 Cybertrucks. The predicted production for full year... Fiscal year 2024 for Cybertruck is 250,000. 250,000. So Tesla is going to produce 10 times more compute, theoretically, by, by, by making 250,000 Cybertrucks, right? Now, if you add to that the, the quote-unquote older Teslas, which eventually will get hardware 4, by the way, but now they have hardware 3, which hardware 3 is nothing to sneeze at, at 36 trillion operation per second, but you do the same math with, with, with hardware free, and to get to the world's largest computer, you need 33,000 Model 3s and Y, right? And they make about 2.2 million per to 50. So I did a calculation, I added this up, this up. This means that theoretically right now, Tesla produces 76, that's, that's with the estimated delivery number for 2024. They, they produce 76 times more compute within their cars, embedded within their cars, than the world, world's largest computer, and that's in one year. 76 time. And if you add to that all of the hardware free that has already been shipped, and you could use a software update, by the way, to make this usable, you would probably instantly, adding 2024 production, you probably get to 200 times the compute of the world's largest computer that is, would be theoretically accessible. Now, of course, it's not going to be this high because most people are not going to want to do it. Not everybody will want to do it. It won't be accessible everywhere. There's the question of finding the customers for this compute, etc., etc., etc. But it, it brings a, a, a thought-provoking idea for Tesla, that it may be sitting on the world's largest decentralized 
compute data center. And all that you know separates Tesla from accessing that data center is a software update. You know, think about that. That's pretty crazy. This is and this is the same story as bidirectional charging and 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 my idea I've developed many times on this channel of developing a national battery where you can manage the energy stored in all of the cars in the US and serve that as a, as, as a battery that could be used for emergencies, national security, all sorts of stuff. Well, would we move towards an idea of a national computer as well, where all of these Teslas networked, connected to a sort of on-demand decentralized AWS could be accessed by any company that requires it or accessed by Tesla to speed up its different endeavors in AI. And that's what I think makes this company um, absolutely fascinating. And the convergence that we get with these cars, you know, they are not just transportation devices. They are consumer electronics, a big consumer, a big item, a big consumer electronic. But nonetheless, they are a consumer electronic. And, and, and this, this, this could be another avenue of, of exponential growth for Tesla. So anyways, this was not investment advice. This was just entertainment. I hope you were entertained. Appreciate your likes. I appreciate your subscribes. Thanks if you follow me on X and have a wonderful day.